What up, IDS Mob? It's your boy here, Wilmington here. This is the Introvert Dating Success Show. And today, I wanna to talk to you guys about a movie that I recently saw that I think really gives a good lesson and why it's important when you're dating somebody to be mindful of how you're treating them, what you're saying to them, and what you're doing to them. Because, you know, as the hero of your own story, anytime you do any kind of thing to somebody else or say the wrong thing or whatever, you're gonna assume, well, I didn't mean it that way, or I'll just say I'm sorry and that person will forgive me. But you really gotta be careful with that because not every situation is gonna be one where the other person is gonna wanna forgive you or be able to, to look back at how you were before that thing happened, okay? And so there's this movie that came out on Hulu called Sex Appeal, or Sex Appeal, because it's, it's about this teenage girl, she's 18, she's about to go into college, she's been a very smarty, smarty person her whole life, 4.0, great average, and so, uh, every year she's gone to this thing called the, like I think it's called AppCon, where basically you come up with the idea of a new app for your phone, and then whoever has the best idea becomes a winner. And so she had been the previous year's champion, and so she was gonna go this year and win. And there was also a guy that she met the year before that she really got attracted to and they started like long distance talking to each other. And so he proposes the idea that when they meet up again for this app con that they hook up. And she's a virgin, she has not done it before. And so she's like, oh, this is great, I wanna do that. But you know, I've excelled in every other area of my life except I have not actually physically done anything with anyone. And I wanna make sure when I get to this guy that I'm gonna be an expert at it. So. Of course, since this is this is actually a rom-com movie, and so because it's a rom-com, you know that she has a best male guy friend who's also been crushing on her for the longest time. And so when the movie started, and I saw this being a premise and that the guy was there, I was like, okay, I already know all about rom-coms. I've watched 10 Things I Hate About You. I've watched Never Been Kissed. I've watched a whole bunch of these things over the years. I already know how this movie's gonna go. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna say now, spoiler alert, in case you wanna see this movie. And even if I'm spoiling it for you, it's, it's worth seeing, okay? But anyway, spoiler alert, my assumption was, okay, obviously by the end of this, they're gonna have gone through some trials and tribulations. At some point, she's gonna hurt his feelings, and then she's gonna go to the other guy, and then realize that, oh my God, I actually like my best friend instead, and then go back to him, and then they're gonna you know, have a whole makeup thing where she has some big speech, and the next thing you know, they're going to the prom together. And so that's what I thought was gonna happen. And so she, she, he had wanted to take her to the prom, but she was like, well, I don't wanna to go to the prom, that's not something that I do, because I'm so focused on my academics, my academics, my academics. And so, but what happens is, she's trying to think of an app to make, and then she realizes, oh wait, part of the reason I don't know how to do anything physically is because I don't know what moves I need to be making to have a consensual uh, hookup in the way that it should flow effortlessly. So if I can come up with figuring out how the mechanics of sex works and the mechanics of attraction work and what things people need to do to get to go from like touching each other to the orgasm stage, then I can create that as an app and then I'll get the prize and I'll also know what to do with this guy when I go to this app con. So of course, who does she recruit? She recruits her best friend who three years prior in ninth grade had tried to hit on her when they were doing a project together. Like he had grazed her boob and like, you know, that it freaked her out and then they didn't talk for like three years. And so she randomly sees him in the hallway and is like, hey, so I'm trying to do some uh, physical freaky stuff, not go all the way, but everything leading up to it in order to make this app. Do you want to be the guy? And he was actually initially like, I, I don't want to do that. But he's been trying to hit on this other girl that was that he finds really cute and doesn't know the moves to make. And so this girl says, well, hey, if you you know practice these moves with me, then you'll be able to help me out. And also, you'll be able to now know the moves you need to make in order to attract this other girl. So then he says, okay, I'll go ahead and do it. So in the course of the movie, you know, he she's going over to his place and they test out things from everything from like touching to having him go under her shirt to feel on her boobs. And then one day she comes over and decides to go down on him to see what that feels like. And so they go through the gamut of all this stuff where she's, you know, he's doing stuff to her, she's doing stuff to him. And of course, this guy liked her from years ago. And so he's thinking as they're doing all this stuff that he, he started to feel 
emotions and feelings. And he had told her early on, he said, hey, you know what? I don't think, because her thought was that sex could be separate from love. And his thought was, well, you need love in order to have sex and you need sex in order to create more love. And it's like a cyclical thing, but you can't have one without the other, which she did not agree with. But as they're doing this thing, she starts to feel and notice that she's kind of having feelings for him, but she she's still stuck on the mission of getting with this other guy. Oh, by the way, I'm getting to the point of this at some point, so just stick with me now. Anyway, so, so yeah, so it comes to a point where you know she's about to go to the to the app con, and they have one more session together where he's allowed to get her off, and then he wants to go all the way fully and penetrate her, and she's like, "Oh no, 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 we're not doing that. We're just friends. Like this is just an experiment." Yada yada yada, yada. you know. And then so he's like, "Well, basically, like I really care for you, and I, I have feelings for you, and you're just saying that's not a thing. Well, I can't continue to do this, and it's really hurt me that you're you're not letting this. You you clearly feel things for me now, and you're not allowing this to happen, and you're just basically using me for this experiment." And she was like, "Well, yeah, but that was the." agreement and so you know I still want to do this other guy and whatever so he gets really hurt and then just is like okay I'm out I'm done and whatever so as she's going to the app con she's consistently thinking about her best friend and so she eventually meets up with the guy that she's been wanting to meet up with for a year and they go to his hotel room and they proceed to do it. But in the process of doing it, you can see on her face that she is just not into it at all. Like she's going through the motions of it. He's able to finally penetrate her and it's not feeling good. So then she gets on top of him and they do stuff. But the whole time it's she's just very unenthusiastic because she's now thinking about her best friend. Okay. So now she's recognizing, oh, and then the day of the, the app con, she goes to the app con to show off this this uh, thing that she made that's supposed to be able to help people get through the mechanics of sex and know how to do it effortlessly, but she's realizing that it, the the app is a bust because the fact that the love element isn't there, it could you could be doing all the things right and it's still ruining everything. So anyway, so this is the point where she realizes, oh crap, I really am falling for like my best friend. I really want to be with him, whatever. You know, maybe I do want to go to prom with him now. You know, that was that wasn't really my thing, and so she gets back from AppCon. And she gets, she goes to his classroom and gets him out of class. And this is the part of the movie, like in all these rom-coms, where the big speech happens, where she's supposed to say, hey, I'm sorry, and I was wrong, and all this other stuff. And so she, she approaches him, takes him to the auditorium, and is wearing like a trench coat so you can't see what's under her. So I'm thinking, oh my God, is she naked? This is like, she's 18 and in, college, and in high school still. So this, this can't be what they're going to show. But he, she's basically saying, hey, I recognize, I realize that it was you, and I really like you, and I want to be with you. And again, this is the part in most movies where dude be like, okay, well, that's cool. Let's make up. And they have a big kissing scene and then fade to black or fade to prom. And then the credits roll and it's all great. But instead, this guy says, no, I, I'm not interested anymore. And basically you blew your chance and I had really feelings for you and I felt like I was being used. And so I don't want to go to prom with you. I don't want to do any of this with you anymore. And so as he's starting to walk away, she's like, hey, but wait. And then she takes off her coat and she has a whole prom dress on. And I was like, oh my God, he's got a, she's got a prom dress on. This is gonna be the part where he's like, oh shoot, she's really serious because she'd never go to prom and now she wants to go. Like, I'm definitely gonna take her back. And so she shows him the prom dress and he looks at her and she, he's just like, no, I still don't want to do it. No, I'm, I'm hurt too much. And then he walks off and my jaw dropped because I have never seen that in a rom-com where the person never didn't get with their best friend in the end. It's always been the person gets with their best friend in the end, no matter how much they messed up, regardless of what the situation was, they get with the best friend. And I thought this is the first time I saw a realistic portrayal of when you hurt somebody badly enough no matter how sorry you are and no matter how much you really regret doing the thing that you did, that doesn't always mean that the other person is going to acquiesce or feel better about the situation just because you came to realize that you messed up. And it's an important lesson because all these movies, for the most part, lie to us about that. Like they lie like, oh, you can be the most, you can do the most cataclysmic thing ever. And then if you just give a few I'm sorry's and I love you's and I'll never do it again, that the other person is going to be fine. But in reality, it could be the opposite, where that person doesn't get over it, where they consistently see you in a negative light, where they can't get back to where they, how they saw you before, and how no matter how much you try to apologize and say that you're sorry, that it's not going to do anything to change their mind. They might be like, hey, you know what? I, I appreciate you saying I'm sorry, and I totally forgive you, but that does not now mean that I can get with you again because they might not want to open themselves up to that hurt. They might be you know, the thing now where it's like, they don't know if you do that again, or if you're gonna you know, be the person that says, oh, I'm sorry, but then six months later, you know, you're trying to turn them down again or do something else that's gonna be hurtful to them, you know? And so it's just a, it's, it was just an interesting lesson to see and a reminder to just be mindful. 
be mindful when you're in relationships. You know, guys, sometimes we get in our own head about things and we have our own egos and stuff and we let pride get in the way. Sometimes in the midst of an argument, we'll start saying things to, to the woman that we're with that we care about, but we're saying things to take jabs at them or to hurt them because we're thinking, well, you know, I mean, I'm saying it at the moment, but I, I don't mean it. And if we, I can apologize later and no harm, no foul. But you never know the things that you say or do that's going to stick with the person you're with to where they're like, I don't ever want to be with this person because I don't, I, I didn't think they had that this in them to do this thing. And now that I know that they can, like, even if they're sorry and they learn from it, I can't put myself back in the line of fire for that, you know? And so this is why as a guy, it's really for anybody, but especially as a guy, you gotta be mindful, man. Like women, they are, we're, we're all emotional, but they, they really lean heavily towards the, the emotional side of themselves. And so when you do or say things to them, it's leaning on that bent. And once you get to where they their emotions can't trust you, it's really, really hard to recover from that. And that's not to say that as a guy in a relationship, you're not gonna make mistakes. You're not gonna sometimes talk out and turn out of pocket, but you really gotta be in your, in your conscious mind, mindful of, I love this person and I'm trying to stay with them. So I don't want to say or do things in the moment right now that's going to stick in her head, that's going to leave repercussions later to where she can't forget about it, to where she, you're constantly being reminded of it, and to where ultimately she feels really, really bad about it, okay? That is your responsibility. So if you're a guy that's been like, well, I just can't help myself. Sometimes I just say things or do things. That is that is a cop out because the reality is just like when you're at your job and no matter how mad you get at your boss, you know not to curse him out or to slap him in the face or to scratch up his car, you can make those same that, that same logic and apply it to the woman that you're with and recognize that she deserves respect, she deserves her care, she's trusting you in part with her emotions, with her affection, with her time, and those things are very valuable things that you can't just haphazardly just say, oh, I do this thing, my bad. You gotta be on your P's and Q's. Again, you're not gonna be perfect, but you gotta know what realm to not go into that's gonna really cause a lot of damage to your relationships, all right? Now, if you need help with some stuff like that or figuring out, well, how can I be more conscious in terms of the things I'm saying or doing? How can I be a better dater? How can I be a better mate to the person that I'm with? You can go to introvertdatingsuccess.com, click on the programs tab and tab and uh, check out the Introvert Dating Success Academy. It's a 12 week program where I coach you through some of these things that you're going through, the ins and outs of what to do, what not to do, how to properly show affection, how to be more in control of yourself should arguments arise, and a variety of other things that are designed to help you have the dating life that you want and then keep the women that you that you want, that you're with when you're able to get them, all right? If that's something you need my help with, again, go to the website, click on the program tab, and I will help you out with that today. Also go there, we got a lot of great freebies there. We also have various eBooks, audio books, and other programs that are designed to help you date as your introverted self while still getting your precious alone time. So check that out. Subscribe to the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Wilmington. You can also support the show by going to Cash App and sending me any kind of amount that you feel is beneficial to the uh, logic that you've learned here today at dollar sign Harry Wilmington. That's all I got for today. I'm Harry Wilmington, and I'll catch you guys on the next show. I'm out. Peace.